One of the craziest things about being a blockchain developer is there's so many different ways to make money with these skills. Of course, you can get a job, you can become a freelancer, but there's all these other ways to make money outside of that, like finding bugs in production projects that can pay you a million dollars or more. And in this video, I want to talk about a blockchain developer who did this not once, but twice in a single month, making $2 million. I'm going to reverse engineer how they did this and talk about the tools and techniques that you can use and learn to try your hand at this also. I'm going to talk about all this as a blockchain developer who works with the same technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step-by-step -step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about how a blockchain developer made $2 million in a single month uh, with bug bounties, okay? So I'm going to dive into this and show you because I'm actually kind of connecting the dots on here on something that most people aren't going to recognize on the surface. So essentially, I'm pulling up this post here from ImmuneFi. This is one of the leading bug bounty platforms in the space where you can actually go look at projects that will pay you in order to find problems in their code, okay? Because, you know, that can save them millions of dollars and they're happy to pay you uh, something for doing that. So Basically, on June 16th, an anonymous white hat submitted a critical vulnerability to Aurora. All right, this is a blockchain protocol via immune file, which consisted of withdrawal logic error at the time of the submission. This meant that $62 million, almost $63 million, uh, was vulnerable. And so the white hat, this person's anonymous, disclosed this, okay, and they were paid out a bounty of $1 million in Aurora tokens streamed out over a year. And if you want to see an exact report on exactly what this vulnerability was, uh, it's got to do with their bridge protocol, okay? But if you actually want to read the code in order to get more familiar with this type of uh, vulnerability, I'll put a link to this down in the description below. But now, let's look at another report, okay, which is from uh, just one week earlier, okay, inside the same month, where another w vulnerability was disclosed in the exact same protocol, all right, for Aurora, from another anonymous white hat developer, <laughs> okay? And so this had to do with a different aspect of the Aurora protocol, uh, basically input parameter sanitization. So basically the first bug was, uh, you know, withdrawal logic. So, you know, output and input, all right? Two different sides, really the same coin. And this was also received a separate $1 million bounty, the exact same amount, paid out over a year, okay? Also facilitated with uh, Immune 5, okay? So I'm kind of reading between the lines here and I've got 90% uh, probability that this is the exact same person because uh, think about it, they're both anonymous developers and if you uh, were able to find a vulnerability in a project like this and let's say you found two, okay, and you wanted to maximize the amount of return you could get on that, if you disclose both at the same time, they're probably just going to patch all up into the same uh, reward, all right? But if you actually wanted to maximize your reward, you could disclose the first one and then figure out how much you could actually get for something like that and then just do it a second time because you already have a reference point. And even if you had to, like, you know, compromise on that second amount, it's probably still going to be more than if you had, you know, done everything all in one go. And if you are able to do it from two different, you know, anonymous uh, accounts, then there's the possibility they would even treat you as two different people and you could maximize the amount of rewards this way. And so if I am indeed right about this, you know, this same developer, you know, made uh, two different $1 million rewards inside of a single month, all right? So counting up to $2 million. So how did this developer do this and how can you learn some of the same types of things where you could potentially try your hand at this? So really, this has got to do with bug bounties. So I've talked about that a lot in this video, but I'll just clarify that in case you're brand new and don't know what that means. So essentially, you know, we saw before, like, uh, in some of these vulnerabilities, like almost $63 million was a risk, okay? So, of course, the developer could have exploited that protocol and, you know, potentially taken $63 million and tried to do something like negotiate, you know, uh, a ransom for those funds to get them back, all right? Uh, or, you know, you could do it a better way where the developer doesn't have to do anything unethical or illegal, okay? And they can be incentivized to act honestly, where, you know, if $63 million is at risk, uh, you as a protocol, you don't really want anybody to steal it because even if the developer knows about it, somebody else could know about it. So what you can just do is essentially settle with them and pay a percentage of what's at risk. And, you know, the developer doesn't have to do anything nefarious and you get to save the money that's at risk. And you're going to take that deal, you know, seven days a week, you know, pay them a very small amount relative to the amount of funds that you could lose. That's the idea of a bounty. And so Immunify has created a platform where developers can connect with protocols in this space 
to act as a, you know, essentially a neutral middle ground to facilitate these disclosures, okay, where they can essentially go through the disclosure process, set up something in place where it makes it a lot easier for people to get the information about their bug, how to, you know, patch it, and then also how for the person who disclosed it uh, to receive the funds so that it's you know, a lot more straightforward to do it. And so you can go to immunefi.com and look at their bounties, okay? You can see, uh, you know, something like the Solana Wormhole Bridge has rewards up to $10 million. You know, MakerDAO is the same thing, all right? And you can browse down even further, okay, uh, to see projects that are still in the millions of dollars and some that go down into, you know, just the uh, tens or hundreds of thousand dollar range. All right, so that's an example of, you know, some of these bounties and how you can find them. But how do you actually do this? Like, how, how do you, you know, go through the same process that somebody like this did to go find uh, a bug and then actually go through the process of making money off of it? So, um, you know, it, first and foremost, you have to have mastered the fundamentals of whatever technology that you're trying to look for vulnerabilities in. So, and there's lots of different, you know, blockchain protocols out there. There's bridges, there's, you know, core protocols themselves. There's smart contracts that live on top of the blockchain. And if you've been watching this channel, or you're a blockchain developer or an application developer, you know, your best bet is going to be able to look for vulnerabilities in smart contracts themselves. OK, so if you're going to do that, then, you know, you definitely need to have a mastery of the Solidity programming language. This is the most widely used programming language for creating smart contracts on top of any blockchain, OK, regardless of the actual chain itself. And so that's really step one for most stuff is going to be a mastery of the Solidity programming language. So once you like once you get able to create projects inside Solidity and read through code, OK, the next step is definitely going to be learn about common security vulnerabilities. So learning the gotchas inside of Solidity. I've actually got a playlist on my YouTube homepage with several videos about hacking smart contracts and some of the common hacks that have happened in the past and some of the common vulnerabilities in Solidity. That's going to be the next thing to learn because, you know, you could just try to, you know, white knuckle your way through this entire process and really try to rack your brain to understand how a contract would be vulnerable. But, you know, one of the fastest ways to getting there is just seeing what's happened in the past and learn how those exploits happen. And that's going to get the creative juices going to how you might spot some things that doesn't follow a common pattern. OK, so another way you can do that is actually to read uh, audit reports uh, for smart contracts that have had vulnerabilities in the past. So, you know, inside these uh, articles on the Immune 5 blog that I mentioned a minute ago, there's actually links uh, to, you know, the bug reports here that will explain the vulnerabilities. And so if you can understand those more, then, you know, you'll be able to use that same knowledge to go look for problems in other spaces, okay? And so you definitely want to understand common vulnerabilities to be able to analyze things from a human perspective. But you can also use, you know, uh, software tools to automate some of this process to find routine things that a computer can find faster than you might be able to do, especially in volume if you're trying to look at multiple smart contracts. So that's where something like uh, Slither comes into place. So Slither, excuse me, Slither is a static analysis tool that will let you, you know, look at smart contracts and find things. And the whole beauty of this is you can do it in an automated fashion where you can do it really fast and you can also do it at scale. So you can look at multiple smart contracts, um, you know, a lot faster than you can manually read through them. And at the end of the day, you know, once you've kind of gone through the common uh, problems that you might see in smart contracts, you use static analysis tools, uh, really nothing at the end of the day sort of beats the, uh, you know, good old fashioned ability to just think outside the box and think about a think like a bad guy and try to act like how you would try to steal this money, okay? And then essentially, you know, that can lead you to things that someone who is writing the code uh, may not have seen or even an auditor in this case. And also, you know, the truth is uh, auditors also miss things in production. There's also, you know, many conspiracies that some auditors mix things on purpose so they can, you know, take money later. But regardless, you know, whether it's author blindness or it's, you know, uh, corruption or whatever, there could be things inside the code that the person didn't see. And if you're just trying to think about, you know, stealing the money, then you might be able to see this thing. And so once you've got some of these techniques down, then how do you actually find projects to look for bugs in, okay? So some projects, you know, will have bug bounties posted. So you can actually go look at ImmuneFi or something like Code Arena, all right, and see like what projects actually have listed bounties, how much they're going to pay out, and the contracts or protocols that are associated with that. They'll have different, you know, tiers based on the severity and which protocol is at risk, okay? So that's a pretty good source. Uh, another way is honestly just to look at projects, even if they don't have bug bounties posted, all right? Just by looking at Etherscan, you can just look at the smart contract source code out there and then find any, you know, vulnerabilities. And there's a common vulnerability that happens all the time. Maybe, in a let's, let's say that one, let's say a vulnerability was found in a protocol and that protocol got forked, okay? You can look at any of the forked applications out there and try to, you know, pursue 
uh, you know, a bounty based on that situation. So another thing is, you know, contracts that have a similar source code or the same source code on Etherscan, okay, those can be easily found duplicates of. So that's another way to find multiple contracts quickly. And so, you know, if you're able to find a uh, specific type of vulnerability and you know that other smart contracts have that similar type of vulnerability or other smart contracts are, you know, do the same type of thing and might have that same vulnerability, that can give you leads for other places to look for bugs too. And honestly, that can be one core strategy for doing this is basically uh, you become really good at finding a very specific type of security vulnerability. And maybe that becomes kind of a trend for a short period of time. And you're sort of like the first person that can go find that. That could lead to some opportunities to find, uh, you know, bugs before other people do. Let's say a new vulnerability comes onto the scene that the community knows about and you become alerted of it. You can sort of get on the auditing forums and things like that. And then you could potentially go find that before other people before that becomes a widely known thing. So the other way to do this is to essentially, you know, get deep on specific projects. Okay. So for example, like it, that that's honestly probably what led to this type of uh, scenario here. Earlier, I was talking about how, you know, the Aurora protocol had two uh, bugs disclosed in with one week of each other by two different, you know, anonymous white hat hackers. My inference here is this is the same person that's trying to maximize their rewards. That, that's another reason why I think that is because, you know, it's really challenging to uh, find these bugs in many cases, okay? And once you're deeply, you know, acquainted with the protocol, then that's going to give you uh, sort of an edge in that case to understand that protocol even more and find other potential problems with it. And so that is another strategy for, for auditing smart contracts or protocols in general. And that's probably honestly what led to this uh, person, again, my inference here, uh, maximizing their rewards, finding two different issues with the exact same thing. And the last thing I'll say about this, you know, really is uh, there's a common misconception that, oh, you know, there's no way I'm going to find a bug out there in a production project, okay? They've had all this auditing stuff. They've had these really advanced developers create this stuff. Like, why would a person like me be able to go find these things out in the wild? Well, you have to understand that, you know, number one, I said this before, but security auditors do make mistakes, all right? There's no reason to say that you couldn't necessarily uh, find something a security auditor couldn't, either out of sloppiness, a rush job, or they're just a human and they, they make a mistake. The other reason is um, some projects are not audited in the first place, okay? They get rushed to throw out there, so you have actually do that. The other reason is some of these projects have had glaringly obvious problems in them. And there's, you know, a little bit of a maybe conspiracy theory that some of these bugs were put there on purpose, okay? Um, because, you know, either an, a security auditor or a developer, um, you know, put this bug there on purpose with the idea that later they were actually going to take the money or that later they were going to disclose the vulnerability through a white hat account, you know, anonymous white hat account, Right. So let's just say that you developed a protocol, you saw a problem, maybe you created the problem or you became aware of it and decided not to disclose it. And then you quit your job. And then, you know, three months later, you're now an anonymous white hat and you disclose a bug and you get paid a million dollars, a lot more than you would have got paid for working that. So anyways, that's another reason why these vulnerabilities could exist in the first place um, and why you could potentially find them even as glaringly obvious problems before that person is able to uh, disclose it in a, in a fast time scale. All right, so that's an overview of how this blockchain developer made $2 million inside of a single month uh, by finding two different $1 million bug bounties. Uh, the tools that you can learn and the techniques that you can learn to try your hand at this as well, and some ideas on how to get started today. So if you like this video, you know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to try your hand at exactly what I'm talking about today, you can get my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you a master blockchain step by step from start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.